Hello everyone, how are you today? I am Dr. Paramjeet and you are watching Dr. Education. Welcome back to my channel. As you know, I make videos about health and healthcare topics and today I am going to cover malaria. All my videos are as always referenced from US National Medical Library and are latest and you can trust the information. So you know what malaria is. Most of you know that it's a major health concern in many of the tropic and subtropic uh, countries, right? And it can actually lead to mild illness in some people and it can lead to a life-threatening illness in some other people also. But do you know that all types of malaria can actually be treated completely if diagnosed and treatment is started in proper time? And do you know that almost 300 to 500 million cases of malaria happen each year all around the world and more than 1 million people die of it every year. But proper treatment can actually cure malaria if started on time, right? So it's a major health problem and it's a bigger health problem for travelers who are especially going to warm climate countries, places because malaria survives in warmer areas, right? So what is malaria? How do we treat it? How it is diagnosed? How it actually causes the illness? What happens inside your body? Let's look at the science. The internet is full of bro science, fake knowledge, half information or propaganda. Your quest of reliable, authentic health information ends here. So subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon and you never have to go anywhere else ever again. We all know that malaria is caused by mosquitoes, but it's not the mosquito, it's a parasite which is present inside the mosquito and this Parasite is first taken from a person who already has malaria and when this normal insect, when this normal mosquito, a special type of mosquito called Anopheles, Anopheles mosquito bites a person with malaria, he can actually pick up the parasite from that person's blood and then this mosquito becomes a carrier and wherever this mosquito bites another person he can actually transmit the disease to that person so that happens and whenever such a transmission happens what happens inside your body so whenever the transmission happens after infection the parasite goes in your blood and this primary parasite which glows in your blood is called sporozoid and this travels to the liver once it goes to the liver it matures and then releases other, another form of parasite, a mature form called merozoids, right? And this merozoid then enters the bloodstream and goes and infects your red blood cells, the blood cells which are actually roaming around in the blood. So when it goes inside, inside the red blood cells, it still multiplies. Then it multiplies, more merozoids are produced and then it breaks the red blood cells. So this breaks after 48 to 72 hours and then it goes to other blood cells, other red blood cells, right? So that's how the problem happens and the malaria spreads. And usually what happens, this process takes time, 10 days to sometimes 4 weeks. Therefore, the symptoms occur after this amount of time. Sometimes it can be early like 8 days and sometimes this process can be very, very slow, taking up to a year. So you might have symptoms of malaria after a long time also. Right? But the symptoms occur in cycles of 48 to 72 hours. So what are these symptoms? First of all, why are these symptoms? Symptoms occur because of the release of these merozoids into the bloodstream from the liver or from the blood or from the RBCs. Right? Obviously, RBCs are getting broken down. So there will be anemia, deficiency of blood because large amount of hemoglobin is released and RBCs are broken down. So anemia will be there, you will have the symptoms. We will talk about the symptoms in a while. But for now what you need to understand because these merozoites are in the blood, they can actually be transmitted through blood also. That's why 
a mother who has an unborn child can actually give malaria to that unborn child by the congenital transmission so a child can have congenital malaria also even blood transfusion you can actually give malaria to somebody blood organ donation or even sharing needles you can give malaria to someone okay also you need to understand that this parasite can only be carried by the mosquito in temperate climate hotter climates hot climates right because this parasite disappears in the winter and some points are important and nowadays even after treatment some of the areas of the world are actually and even after treatment some of the mosquitoes have actually started developing resistance to insecticides plus the malarial parasite is also getting resistance to some antibiotics because of these two things that mosquito is getting resistance the parasite inside the mosquito is getting resistance so that's why it's becoming difficult to control malaria in uh, and the rate of infection in of this disease right so malaria in english continue part two so what will happen once you get infected with this bacteria with this parasite <clears throat> So what are the signs and symptoms of malaria? What will happen inside you? Once these merozoites, this parasite goes inside the blood, early symptoms are that you will start getting irritable, right? You while feel, you might feel drowsy, right? Poor appetite, trouble sleeping. These are the symptoms which are initial phase symptoms. And then fever starts. Before fever, there is chills chills and then fever with a fast breathing pattern the fever can be either uh, can either gradually lie the fever can either gradually rise over one to two days or spike very suddenly to a high grade fever like 105 102 degrees centigrade right above 40 degrees celsius or even higher then as the fever then what happens as as the fever ends, the person's body temperature quickly returns to normal as and there is an intense episode of sweating. The same pattern of symptoms, chills, fever, sweating can repeat every 2 to 3 days. That's why I said 48 to 72 hour cycle of symptoms is there. Cycle of chills, fevers and sweating. They can repeat after every 2-3 to three days depending upon which parasite is causing the infection, malarial parasite. Okay. So, other symptoms can accompany with these typical symptoms like headache, nausea, you can have uh, pains all over the body, especially in the back and abdomen. You can have an abnormally large spleen. Right? Why? Because your blood cells are getting broken down and broken blood cells are basically sequestered into the spleen. Right? And if the malaria actually the parasite goes inside the brain, then someone might have scissors also, convulsions also. Right? Scissors, convulsions can happen. And kidney can also be affected in some cases. So, who gets malaria? Who will get actually this problem? See, many people, thousands and millions of people are getting infected every year and especially in uh, tropical, subtropical regions, some the countries which are near the equator, right? So, if you are living around these areas like Asia, America, parts of Europe, then you or some even sub-Saharan Africa, then you have a risk of having, getting malaria. How can you diagnose if you have malaria? See, doctors suspect malaria on the basis of person's symptoms. This typical chill, fever, sweating cycle, right? Physical findings of fever. Then on the basis of the history, whether the person lives in a malarial uh, prone, whether the, then the person's history, whether they have traveled to a malaria prone area or they live in a malaria prone area, then doctor might take a blood sample to check right whether the parasite is there in your blood inside the infected red blood cells or in the blood right obviously a physical examination will be done to find out if there is any sign if there is an enlarged liver or enlarged spleen then what are the tests first is a rapid diagnostic test which are becoming very more common uh, because they are easy to use and they require less training uh, by laboratory technicians 
So rapid diagnostic, rapid malaria tests are common. Then blood smears can be taken, uh, which can be seen under a microscope to actually see the parasite. Every 6 to 12 hours, you can actually take a blood smear. 6 to 12 hour interval because sometimes you can miss in first sample. Okay. Then complete blood count. Right. Complete blood count can be done which will identify anemia. Right. Hemoglobin deficiency if it is present because of blood loss. Right. Then some places, some countries where this malaria is so common, doctors even treat people with malaria who have a fever with no obvious cause without getting lab tests for malaria. Right. So how it is treated, how malaria is treated? See, malaria is treated with anti-malarial drugs, medicines which are given by mouth or injections or intravenous into the veins injections, right? Depending upon the parasite causing the malaria, the person might be treated in OPD basis or they might need hospital admission and IV medication. Especially a special type, a serious type of malaria called falciparum malaria. Falciparum malarial parasite is a very serious disease. It's a medical emergency that requires hospital stay, right? Chloroquine is a drug which is an anti-malarial agent drug which is often used for treatment but chloroquine resistant infections are becoming very common in many parts of the world. So therefore possible therefore chloroquine resistant infection needs to be treated with other medicines like artemisin derivative or combination of them like artemether and lumifen, lumifentrin like artemether and lumifentrin then other options like Atovaquone, proguanil, quinine based regime can be used in combination with some doxycycline or clindamycin, uh, mefloquine in combination with artisanate or doxycycline, right? The choice of drug also depends on parts where you got the infection. Apart from these combination of drugs, medical care also needs to be given including IV fluid, sometimes uh, you know supportive medications for breathing support can also be given depending upon what are the problem maybe because we have to look for dehydration signs of dehydration convulsions anemia breathing difficulty and other complications right because complications can happen on the brain on the kidney on the spleen right so the, therefore the patient needs fluids blood transfusion and even breathing difficulty therefore the patient might need iv fluids and sometimes even help in breathing like a ventilator or a BiPAP machine or sometimes blood transfusion because of severe anemia, right? But if this condition is diagnosed early and treated on time, malaria can usually be cured in just two weeks, right? However, many people who actually live in areas where malaria is common get repeated infections and really they never recover between the episodes of infection and without proper treatment the disease can be fatal especially in children who are malnourished right so it's important to know about this condition although the outcome right the prognosis is expected to be good in most cases with proper treatment but in falciparum malaria complications are more so what are the complications? Like I said, brain infection, destruction of blood cells like anemia, kidney, liver failure, meningitis can happen, respiratory failure because fluids will go inside the lungs, pulmonary edema, there can be rupture of the spleen leading to massive internal bleeding, hemorrhage, these all things can happen leading to death. So how can you prevent this problem? Most people who live in an area where malaria is common have already developed some immunity to the disease and visitors who will visit and visitors to such areas should take preventive medication. And it is important to see your doctor well before the trip because treatment may be required to begin as before as two weeks, right, before you travel to such an area and it might need to be continued for over a month after you leave the area. The type of anti-malaria drug prescribed to you depends upon the area where you are going to visit. 
right travelers to south america africa and, and indian subcontinent asia and south pacific should take one of the following medicines either mefloquine doxycycline chloroquine hydroxychloroquine atovaquone or proguanil in combination right either this even pregnant women should consider taking preventive drugs because the risk to fetus from the drug is less than the risk of catching this infection especially in warm climate chloroquine has been the drug of choice for protection against malaria but because of the resistance it is now only suggested for use in areas where plasmodium vivax or plasmodium ovale or plasmodium malaria are present but falciparum falciparum needs a pro other type of regime so falciparum malaria is becoming increasingly resistant to all these uh, anti malarial medication and therefore the recommended drug for falciparum prevention is mefloquine atovaquone or proguanil in combination also called as malarone and maybe doxycycline can be used so that is important and these are the four types of malarial parasites right falciparum is the most severe vivax ovale and malaria plasmodium okay so that's the information which you need about malarial parasite and obviously you need to protect yourself from mosquitoes wearing protective gloves over the arms legs wear full sleeve clothes right uh, having mosquito knitting while sleeping around the house around your bed insect repellents etc etc everything which i have told in the dengue video dengue video applies here as well so make sure to watch the dengue video also also we are going to cover chikungunya typhoid very soon so stay connected guys this is the information very 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 vital information so please don't hesitate to share this information give me a big thumbs up because i need to know whether you like this information or not and please stay connected to stay healthy i am dr paranjit and you are watching dr education